guys and this is going to be a little bit of a tutorial but also a follow-up video based on a question so in the last simplify open tx video we looked at the a to a to x comparisons in logical switches so i posted that video up on the iNav fixwing group and we had a question here from tom smith asking about whether you could use logical switches to check the airspeed. So I'm, I'm guessing this is a warning for a low airspeed. So if, it, if it's getting close to stall. He's had a, a little look and a little go. So what we're gonna do is have a quick look at how to, to do this in Companion. So if I bring Companion up, I've actually got my Nano Goblin model, which has got some telemetry sensors stored in it. So if we click on telemetry, we can see we, we have some data here, not everything. And uh, this model hasn't got a, an airspeed sensor, so it hasn't got that exact telemetry sensor that we're looking for. So what we've got down on this side is the actual sensor itself. So what we're gonna be using is G-speed, just to, for this example. And you can see it's set to miles per hour. So, what we can also have a quick look at is on iNav GitHub, which is this address up here, I'll put a link to it in the description, is it will actually show you all the different sensors that are available if you have uh, this sensor on your flight controller. So what we have here is A speed. So this is actually the airspeed from the pitot tube. So this, this here, a, ASPD, is the sensor that you should really be using to do this um, check. So what we're gonna do is check for a ground speed of less than 20 miles per hour. Obviously your sensor could be set to kilometers per hour, so you'll need to check that and work out the exact speed you want. So I've probably already, I've not actually looked in here, so I've got some logical switches already. So what we'll do, we'll just go down, down to here, number 60, just to get it out of the way. So we are only dealing with this. So what we're gonna do is because we want to find a, an airspeed that's less than the figure that we're using, we use this one, a, a is less than X. And what we're gonna do is find our airspeed sensor here. Now on the actual transmitter, it's, it's quicker to do this because if you hold down the enter button and then let go, it pops up a little menu where you can actually choose different like categories of, of um, the A uh, features. And one of them, I think it's close to the bottom, is actually telemetry. So if you click on telemetry, it will take you down automatically to the start of the telemetry list, which is right down here. So what we want to find in here is you'll be if you're using pito tube you'll want a a spd you don't want v spd that's the vertical speed you so we'll be using g spd which should be in this list somewhere there we go so you want just g spd you don't want the minus or plus what what those are for the minus tells you the lowest ground speed and the plus will tell you the highest ground speed so you just want this one, which is active all the time. It's actually got in here miles per hour. I don't believe it will tell you that on the transmitter, it will just have a value. So what we can do is say 20.0. Oh, sorry, I just pressed the wrong button. So 20.0. So now, if we're doing less than 20 miles an hour, uh, log this uh, logical switch 60 will be active. Now we should be able to simulate this and somewhere there's a part where you can enter a oh, telemetry simulator so we put this up here and then we'll find our ground speed it's got it in kilometers per hour on, for some reason on here so if we stick that to 30 and click simulate we'll see that 60 is um is active so i'm guessing 30 kilometers an hour is less than 20 miles an hour so if we put that to 40 and now it's turned off so we can see that that's working by modifying the telemetry it's a shame that's not in miles per hour so 
what what we need to do now is uh you obviously want some feedback so if we put that back to 30 it activates right so we close this down so we've got a logical switch that we know is working when we when we're lower than 20 miles an hour it activates so now what we want to do is add a special function so again i'm just going to go down to 60 just because it's out of the way and now we find our logical switch 60 and now you can do whatever you want you can play a, a sound or a a track if you if, a, if you've got a stall track or whatever you want but for, for this example, I'm just going to set it up as a siren. And at the moment, it's set to no repeat. So if you go down below 20 miles an hour, it'll play the siren once and then it won't play it again. If you want, you can have it so that it plays a siren all the time or once every second until you get back above the 20 miles an hour. So we'll simulate that now. So. There we go, you can hear the siren going off. So, where's my ground speed? There we go. So we put that to 40 kilometers an hour, the siren stops. And then if we lower the speed, when we hit that threshold, which I, I have no idea what 20 miles an hour is in kilometers an hour, but I'm guessing it's gonna come up quite soon. There we go. So the siren will start again until you get back above that threshold. So, what is it? There you go, 32.1 kilometers an hour is 20 miles an hour. So that's, that's how you do that feature. So it's a nice simple feature. I thought I'd just show how it's done as another example of a, an A to X uh, comparison using, the, uh, using telemetry to get our data. So. There you go. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found it useful. I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you did. Uh, subscribe and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. But please, if you do a thumbs down, leave a comment and let me know why. But yeah, thank you. See you on the next one. Goodbye.